Welcome to Vote Pro Podcast, brought to you by VotePropot.com. So, you know, we got to give credit to Utah for trying to get a medical marijuana program off the ground. You never thought that of all the states uh, as conservative as Utah is, they'd be the last state to legalize. But uh, <laughs> apparently they're having a lot hey, of Hey, man, problems. those Mormons can party as hard as anybody I know. That's the rumor. I've heard that. <laughs> I've heard that. But you got to give, uh, uh, Utah, give Utah credit because last week they changed the law. So now it's legal to have premarital sex. Whoa! I'm moving there. Wow! All right. All right, they're moving into the they're moving into the 20th century. Yeah, about time. Are you serious? Is that a real thing? Yeah. Jeez. Hello, everybody, once again, and and welcome to Vote Pro Podcast. I'm Phil Adams. I'm Jay Britton. I'm Andrew McCready's. And we're going to get to a whole lot of fun stuff again today. Jay's going to do an article about the relationship between cannabis use and body mass. So for all you dieters, we have a few. New articles about celebrity incursions into uh, the cannabis field. Not an actual field, but, you know, the, the area. A couple stories about marijuana that is just not fit for human consumption. But first, I want to get into this article. As it happens, a top congressman on the GOP side is pressing for a Democratic majority to pass the marijuana bill. Now, this is good news. This is from Forbes Online, and um, the ranking member on the Republican side in the House of Representatives, Representative Doug Collins of Georgia, has said, quote, the legal status of cannabis in the United States is in disarray. It is incumbent on Congress to clarify these issues and reform our federal laws. Uh, Now, I couldn't agree more. He goes on to say more than 30 states and the District of Columbia have legalized the medicinal and or recreational use of cannabis. Other states have opted to decriminalize. Um, And he goes on to say, given that the substance is still a Schedule I drug under federal law, this conflicting patchwork of state and federal laws has created a unique set of legal challenges. Hmm. Well, I could not agree more. So is he uh, proposing a specific bill? He is. Um, The Republican lawmakers have put together the Strengthening the Tenth Amendment Through Entrusting States Act, or the States Act. Don't you love it when they can create an anagram with the name of the bill (laughs) that actually is a word? You know, I I think that's... uh, I think they spend a lot as much time on that as, as they right did on the bill. bill yeah. <laughs> but, but it's a bill to shield... Um, the state cannabis laws from federal intervention, which I think is um, extremely important. Um, He said, we believe this committee and this Congress must act to clarify the rights and responsibilities relative to cannabis of individuals, physicians, businesses, medical patients, and law enforcement officials. Mm. Um, So that's, that's kind of the essence of the States Act. And I think this is critically important. And and if you guys don't mind, I'm going to just spend a few seconds talking about, this is all about the Tenth Amendment. Now, just for folks who are not familiar, the Tenth Amendment says, the powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states, respectively, or to the people. What that means is that if the Constitution does not recognize expressly a power of the federal government, then the federal government does not have that power. It's a power that goes to the states or to the people. So, you know, when you see people say things like, well, where in the Constitution does it say yada, 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 what they're saying is if it's not in the Constitution, the federal government doesn't have the power. But the problem is that the federal government seems to assume so many powers oh, yeah. that the Constitution doesn't recognize. And and that is in violation of the Tenth Amendment. And a lot of these lawmakers, um, especially on the Republican side, are saying, hey, wait a minute. 
there's such a thing as a Tenth Amendment, and we intend to enforce it. And um, so, I, I think uh, this is a, a, a very important step in, in uh, kind of restoring rule of law. What do you guys so think? So, do you think a lot of, a lot of Republicans and conservatives who, who may be on the fence or have uh, uh, a slightly negative or positive opinion on cannabis, this might really start changing some of their minds? To go, guys, well, it's more think, of a state's issue. I mean, is that, is that what they're saying? I think it yeah. already is changing their minds. I mean, you look at, this is the ranking member, uh, rep- ranking Republican member of the U.S. House of Representatives. Right. And he wrote this letter, and he is a, a member of the um, House uh, Judiciary Committee. Mm-hmm. Um, there you go. And he wrote this letter to the chairman of the committee on Wednesday. So it's uh you know we we talked about John Boehner who is now out of Congress and he's getting into the cannabis business and he's pushing for these same things but now we have representative Doug Collins of Georgia who is in the house and he's pushing for this and and I applaud it and I hope that it succeeds so folks out there please find out all you can about the States Act, S-T-A-T-E-S, as you can imagine, the States Act, and call your congressman to support it. Well, it's Phil, very, very important. That's Jerry Nadler's committee. Is he on board with yeah, this? Yeah, I was trying to avoid using his name. Well, I know. Go ahead. Is he on board? What's, <laughs> where is his, what's his stance on this? His, his stance on this bill is he's trying to impeach Trump. <laughs> if he can figure out a way to impeach yeah, Trump that's pretty much... by signing this bill or by rejecting this bill, he will do it. Yeah. Um, so if, if it'll impeach Trump, he's on. If it won't, he's not. <laughs> yeah, he's got bigger fish to fry, so to speak. Right. Well, I, I think of the 35% of the American public that still are not, who still don't support cannabis reform, because 65% does. Right. Mm-hmm. Does yeah. how many of those people I think are Republican, more conservative? Probably more than half. Yeah, I would think. Right, yes, and, I would and, think. and I this would argument think. speaks to them. It does. Well, it, it it points out that this is a states' rights issue, which is so. If you really huge, want to reform know? law, I mean, we could sit here and talk about some of the attributes and talk to people on the left, and we're just preaching to the choir. I mean, they're they're going to vote for it. So maybe this is more time to start using. Uh, to appealing to people on the in the center, targeting the right and the right. Yes, and and I think we've been doing that all along, and and saying that you know you may not like you know cannabis use, so don't use it. Right. But if if you are, I mean, if you are a true constitutionalist conservative, you know you have to back this this legalization effort, or at least getting it out of the hands of the federal government, because the federal government doesn't have the constitutional authority to do what they're doing. For people who look to cannabis for its health benefits, um, Jay, you've got an article about um, cannabis and uh, weight. Yeah, there's it's exactly the opposite of what I would uh, assume, and that is a study that uh, has found that persistent cannabis use is associated with reduced body mass index, which is essentially weight. Uh, East Lansing, Michigan. A team of Michigan State University researchers assessed the relationship between cannabis use and body mass index in a nationally representative sample of 33,000 subjects. Wow. Um, Yeah, they concluded, quote, this new prospective study builds from anecdotes, preclinical studies and cross-sectional evidence on inverse associations linking cannabis use and obesity and shows an inverse cannabis BMI increase association. Now, that's like a science speak for people who used weed regularly uh, tend to have a lower body mass than people that don't. And they also included in the study people who had quit. Um, and I, I just, uh, that's... It certainly isn't the case in my in my personal experience. Um, but well, I don't know. I, I think mean, it's I, interesting. I I, uh, I smoke regularly. I'm a pastry chef, and I got a 31 inch waist. Ah, fuck you. There you go. 
<laughs> no, it's, and we it's, hate you. it's surprising because you think of the munchies and use the regular use of uh, cannabis and you think of getting hungry and eating. And um, so I think it's interesting. That's, it it kind of surprised me. It does say at the end of the article that, you know, more studies have to be uh, pursued. But this was, you know, a pretty big sample, 33,000 subjects. I, d- I did read a study this week that said that I forgot where it was done, but they found that THC causes the munchies. What? Imagine never that. heard that one. So you need to do a study to figure they, that they out. They did a study for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> well, I I thought it was interesting when um, one of our previous guests, Celeste Miranda, mentioned that there is promising research of other cannabinoids to be used as appetite suppressants. Right. I've read so that. So it, it's it's all there in the same plant. Yeah. So yeah. that's kind of interesting. Speaking of getting physical, we have some celebrity news, do we not? We do indeed. We always try to find the celebrity news. I've got one here, another endorsement from uh, our friend Olivia Newton-John. Those of us who are around in the 70s remember Olivia Newton. Yep, yep. She likes to get mellow. She, she's she been fighting cancer for many years now, actually. Um, and uh, Olivia Newton-John, who is dealing with cancer for the third time, says she's leaning on cannabis. Quote, I use a lot of cannabis in my healing, she told Yahoo Lifestyle in an interview that was published last week. It helped me incredibly with the pain, and it helped me sleep. And uh, how old do you, do you guys think Olivia Newton is? Oh, she's got to be... Oh, I guess she's 60s. in her 70s. She's 70, guys. The hell? Yeah. Anyway, so uh, good luck, Olivia. I hope things work out for you. It's, uh, third trial with cancer, that's that's a bitch, man. Yeah. And uh, so there's another well, who else celebrity did we talk about last week who was using cannabis to treat, you know, the pain Tom and, and sleeplessness? Tom Brokaw, yes, right. of course. So, so you know, more celebrities... Um, not just uh, advocating, but talking about their own experiences, and that's good stuff. And that certainly um, helps with the numbers when when you talk about polling, because your average American, and especially we were talking about earlier, those maybe in middle America who are of older age, some of whom have never tried cannabis, and then they see people that they're familiar with from television or music or whatever, you know, endorsing it. That's That's got to be a good yep. thing, you know? Yeah. I got another endorsement here. I got a story, a winning story from the Tiger rock star from Mars himself, Charlie Charlie Sheen. No way. Yeah. (laughs) Man. (laughs) Is he endorsing cocaine and heroin? No, as it turns out, we all know (laughs) Charlie Sheen was diagnosed with with HIV. And um, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I did not know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. But, uh, and um, so, but, so apparently, he said he he stopped smoking pot over ten years ago. A few years ago, this deal was was offered to him, and they started working on it. And this was back when he was still, you know, getting high or you know doing drugs. Um, mm-hmm. So apparently, he was drinking and doing hard drugs, but he quit smoking pot ten years ago. So now hmm. he's sober. He's been sober for ten months, and they are starting this uh, a line of cartridges, vape pen cartridges called Genius. <laughs> genius. Genius. That's, that's, that's genius. genius. Yeah. And so, even though he doesn't uh, do use cannabis, what are these? Just like THC cartridges, Andrew? Or? Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Boy, everybody's getting into biz, huh? Yeah. So, okay. So he has a couple different flavors. He has the Malibu Dream, Grandma's Perfume, and Clown Mace. Clown <laughs> Mace, because Charlie says <laughs> Clown Mace is great because what clown shouldn't be maced? <laughs> God. <laughs> there you go, Charlie. Hey. And then, but then he goes on to Damn. say, uh, "I'm tired of pretending I'm like not special. I'm tired of pretending like I'm not a f- like like I'm not bitching a total fucking Jeez. rock star from Mars." He's got the biggest head in the business. Right. I think. Yeah. So when, selling, when was he pretending that again? I, I'm trying to remember. He now. said they're selling their cartridges for sixty to seventy dollars each, which is as far as compared to the Maryland market, that's pretty high. And he's in California, so I which I think it's probably prices are lower than than Maryland. So he's coming in at a pretty yeah. high high well, price. He's putting a premium on the celebrity name, obviously. I would, I would say, yeah. Well, I hope Charlie's okay, man. And, Good and luck, doing buddy. his utmost to boost that celebrity name sounds like. Well, best of luck to Charlie and Olivia, and uh, to all of those who are 
using cannabis to uh, to fight the good fight for their own good health. And and uh, if it helps, more power to you. So th- we've got some um, stories about bad pot. And when I say bad, I mean unfit um, for human consumption for a number of reasons. Uh, so, Jay, you've got a story out of Spain yeah, regarding you, this. you guys aren't heading to uh, Madrid anytime soon. Andrew, I know you're the world traveler amongst us. I am. I'm going in a, in a month. Are you really? Well, yeah, I'm going to Madrid. Be, don't be buying any weed on the street. A new study reveals that street cannabis in Madrid contains high levels of, are you ready for this, fecal matter. Ooh. I got this Yuck. from Inquisitor.com. A study suggests that 88% of cannabis sold in Madrid is not fit for human consumption. According to a study conducted by two analysts, a large percentage of cannabis available on the street in Madrid are contaminated with fecal matter. In addition to this, some samples also contained the aroma of fecal matter as well. Oof. Jose Manuel Moreno Perez, a pharmacologist from the University of Madrid, collected 90 samples of cannabis available on the street with the intent of discovering if it were fit for human consumption, according to the BBC News. And what he found was that many of these samples contain unacceptable levels of fecal matter. Collecting hashish samples, Perez then sorted the samples into their shape identifier in order to determine whether the shape of the cannabis samples were any indicator of the contamination levels. After examining the samples, it was found that a staggering 94% of the acorn-shaped samples contained dangerous levels of E. coli bacteria. Oh, my Lord. Ugh. Yeah, so... So that, that's pretty nasty. Now, are we talking animal it doesn't, fecal it, matter? It I doesn't mean, say, it, because it, it's really E. coli, the bacteria from the digestive tract. So it, it could be from any animals. But, you know, the, I think what this gets back to is, again, legalization equals regulation equals testing. And, you know, we get back to the black market. I think it would be fascinating to see a study done here in the U.S. of black market weed and see what the hell's in it. I think we absolutely you should. You know, have I mean, that's one of the beautiful things about uh, legalizing cannabis is, you know, going to a dispensary, at least you have some comfort that. What you're buying is safe. If it's like manure that we're talking about, you know, a lot of a lot of people grow produce with manure as opposed to chemical fertilizers because it's organic. Yeah. Well, you know, you got to be careful with that stuff too right. because just because it's organic doesn't mean it's healthy. I think on on farms when they use cow manure as fertilizer, it's processed. They is just it, don't, you know, uh, you know, they just shovel it, shit on the plants. Yeah. Well. No. Right, you got to be. You have to be just as careful with that as as with anything else. Or right, you it's have to dried and and it's it's sifted and and spread evenly across the, the ground, and you can you can definitely smell the aroma, but it's it, it's not. You, it has an odor, but it's not like like fresh, you know, cow or horse manure. Well, I, I don't know anything about about farming, but I uh, you would kid, think I, just, I live in the country. You would think cleaning the plants before <laughs> processing that. would take care of that to some degree. Maybe if there's some uh, cultivators out there who want to send us an email or. Well, the, or, no, actually, or, the mold know. comes in during the curing, not during the. Growth. Well, no, I, yeah, the mold, but I'm talking about I'm talking about contamination, oh, like the, the fecal, fecal matter. Someone obviously used you know. it for fertilizer, or yeah, or or it might have come from the water. It might be using. I mean, you're talking ninety percent of the tests. That's staggering. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I, I'd be interested to know how um, how that's done with uh, with American growers, and and you know, uh, if anybody knows anything about that or has something to share on that, absolutely get in touch with us. Check us out at votepropot.com. Yeah, send us an email at votepropot at gmail.com. Call our message line at 240-257-2441. Leave us a message. We'll play it on the show. And please like and follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Just do a search for Vote Pro Pot. Now, speaking of moldy weed... Andrew, you've got some uh, information about that, too. Yeah, as it turns out, the United States government in Kentucky has been growing cannabis for research uh, for years, for years. Now, they, mm-hmm. as it turns out, it's the, this, it's the only facility sanctioned by the government to grow cannabis for research that's, that's sanctioned by the government. Now, they did okay. a study on it, and guess what? It's loaded with mold. 
It, uh, Whoa. It, uh, <laughs> they actually did. They tested it. They even found trace elements of lead in it. Now, the problem oh. with the mold is, <sighs> is that it, it throws off all the testing done. Like, for example, what, now the testing they did there at their growth facility, they said this is 13% THC. When they gave it to an independent person, they said, well, it's loaded with mold. If you really study it correctly, it's only 7% THC. Oh, wow. No so kidding. this is it's a, it's a problem. I mean, this is obviously a problem. It is a problem. And, and this uh, is this is the facility that supplies all the weed for the government to test? Is that what you're saying? For the government testing? Wow. Yes. Damn. Well, doesn't this kind of call into question the, the results of the government testing? You know, and this, if this were taken right. to court, it, you, it might get thrown out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the government yeah. cannot, does not know how to grow it or test it. Obviously. Yeah. Or cure it. Yeah. That could be a problem. <laughs> so one of the arguments that, that the police make a lot is that they want to put shut down the illegal cannabis market. And they're, and I believe that arresting people and cracking down that way is not going to solve the problem because as soon as you arrest someone, someone else takes the takes their place. What you need to do is to eliminate the demand for it. So they need to go to all the evidence lockers. They need to get thousands of samples of illegal cannabis and need to test it and they need to publish mm. these results. Because if everyone knew that... Uh, that they're smoking pesticides and sexicides and mold and insects and fecal matter. Right. I think they might and think lead. twice before buying it. I think a lot of people would. Absolutely. The other thing the police say that they can't tell the difference between illegal marijuana and legal marijuana. If it comes in a container, air cut container that has grass roots or curio put on it, guess what? That's legal. If it's in a zip it's probably zip legal. lock, chances are it's not. If it smells like mold, it's definitely not legal weed. And I mm-hmm. think if they use that criteria, they could probably tell 90% of the time if someone's holding legal or illegal marijuana. So what would it take to, to be able to do that? To, 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 in other words, to collect uh, uh, from the from police departments? And, it would and, seem to me if the police departments want to shut, sincerely want to shut down the black market, the cannabis black market, they would cooperate. Now, yeah, test it all. Test all the seed. Let's see what's in there. I yeah, mean, but from a legal they, standpoint, I wonder. So not only the know? police, the, not only would the police... I want to do this because it would really help. Uh, it would diminish the demand for black market weed, but the legal weed growers want it. I mean, it's a win-win mm-hmm. for both sides. I mean, yeah, everyone. Yeah, it seems like it. I, I would think that this is something that the police are not going to take the initiative on themselves. Right. It's going to have to be a, a, a matter for state or municipal, you know. Yeah, law legislation, legislation yeah. to to say or 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 at least some kind of directive from a mayor's office or a governor's office to say, okay, here's what you guys need to do. Um, that's that's where we need to 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 affect the change. And again, this is something that people on the ground like you and me can get involved with. Um, this is something that if you are a, if you are a believer in this, get on the phone, write an email. There's a whole list of things that you can do. Go on to votepropot.com, check out our Take Action page, and find out what's going on and who's doing what. And, and make your voice heard. I got a quick hack. Go out and get uh, a bag of Oreo cookies, open them up, scrape out the, uh, the filling, the center part, the, and... Uh, just squirt in a little bit of RSO oil. Like says, you get ten, you get ten cookies. Put a, a hundred milligrams in. You'll get each, and then mix it in with the filling. Then put them back together, mm. and you got uh, infused Oreos. And if the, if it's a little <laughs> nice. too thin, you put a lot of oil in there. Just add a little confectionery sugar and get it to the right consistency. All right, and you have a an infused double stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's a, so much for uh, the. Uh, I, I would eat those. So much for the BMI. <laughs> and for your small, keep them out of reach of small children because they will. They they would yeah, definitely see that good point and eat them. That's and right. hide them from your adult children because they will definitely steal them. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to this, uh, to the cops question, Andrew, you've got a story out of Tennessee regarding uh, regarding the police. What have you got there? Yeah, actually, in Memphis, what happens now? That apparently, there was a violent crimes task force, and two police officers on that task force would go around find drug dealers and you know pull guns on them and shake them down. They'd take their money. They would they would. Um, uh, get involved with the drug deals. They would offer protection for, to them for payment. 
Mm-hmm. Now, they were doing this so much that one of the guys they shook down was a member of the police department's drug task force posing as an undercover seller. So <laughs> the <laughs> drug task force set these guys up. They set up a deal for like $10,000 worth of heroin, and they, they set them up. They recorded it all, and they busted them. And these guys are gone. They're, they're going to jail Good. for a long time. Good. Long damn time. <laughs> Damn. Good. Nothing worse than a dirty cop. Well, you know, you know, I don't. I truly believe. I know a fair amount of police officers, and a lot of them they're real good guys. You know, yeah, and a lot Most of them are of sincere. Them. And, and the problem is yep. now every case that these two guys testified in is going to get thrown out. Yeah. If That's you right. had, good if you're point, a lawyer yeah. and one of your clients is in jail because of this guy, he's he's going, he's walking. Yeah, sweet. You know? <laughs> and so, so they're really hurting the, the the other police, the police department, and the prosecutors. I mean, these guys are. I mean, that's. You know, it's like, you know, it's one thing when someone lies to you, but if it's someone who you trust, it hurts even more, you know? Yeah. That's right. We, we trust yeah. these guys, man. It's their job to enforce the law, not to break it. You know, that's, mm. you know, I think when someone, you know, I mean, I don't know, we should, they sort of should have like a maximum sentencing for these guys. Oh, yeah. Well, I do, I do think the sentencing is more severe um, when it's, when, when cops are involved. Um in, in many of these things. Well, sometimes, sometimes not. Sometimes cops get pretty light sentences. Not dirty cops, I don't think, though. I don't well, know. I, don't I, know. I, I think nobody likes a dirty cop. Well, it's one thing of a cop, if he gets a DWI or, or something like yeah, that, man, that's yeah. what, let him keep his job. Just, you know, make, yeah, him, he's human. Or put, make him clean that's up all thing. the uh, yeah. joint D, DWI check, checkpoints. You know? When he's using his position no, as but a right. cop, right. that's right. right. Abusing his authority. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Fuck. So what do, uh, what do the cops down in Tennessee... Uh, think about this whole yeah. legalization thing. In Nashville, Tennessee, uh, they have a medical marijuana bill. And apparently the, the state police, I don't know if it's the, the unions or just the law enforcement in general, are, are speaking out against it. Hmm. Now, what they're, what they're saying is that it's a, high, it's a dangerous, highly addictive drugs that will what? just increase the uh, addiction epidemic. Oh, my God. Seriously? It will increase the addiction epidemic. Yeah, and the other, and the other argument that they're using is that uh, it's 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 very dangerous. So buying you know any drug on the black market can be dangerous. Now who's going to buy that, Andrew? So so dangerous and addictive um, is is that true, Andrew? <laughs> well, it can be dangerous if it's uh, if it's tainted pot, if it has mold and and fecal matter on it, and, f- <laughs> and lead. Know? All the more reason to make it legal. <laughs> it may not kill you, but it'll make you sick. And the other argument, here's one where we're hearing more and more. And they're saying, here, the, the, uh, someone from the Tennessee Highway Patrol got up and said that in Colorado and Washington, since they legalize, let me, let me quote him because the wording is important. It has more than doubled the overall percentage of fatal car crashes in Colorado and Washington. What? And we think the same would hold true is here. Yeah, well, here's the deal. I've read the two studies on it. One said it's total bullshit. One said, oh, we got to wait. It's doubled. What has happened since the, since legalization? Now, whenever there's a fatal car accident, they test everyone involved. Mm. See if they test positive for, pot for, for cannabis. Which they never did before. Right. right, which they never did before. So now, if someone who may not be at fault but was involved in a fatal car accident I see. Had smoked marijuana three weeks before and it was still in their system, but they were not under the influence at the time of the, of the accident. That 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 would test. Well, that's that the positive, data right? is completely it's a, skewed. It's a, so it's a meaningless statistic. Yeah, utterly meaningless statistic. It's bullshit. Well, I, I'm I'm just uh, for for those who uh, who heard or didn't. Um, just a reminder: when we spoke to um, Doctor David Behrman. And this is a guy, you're not going to find anyone in the world with more clinical and, and experiential knowledge about cannabis and the human body. Right. When I put him to a direct question, you know, is cannabis d- uh, addictive? Is it dangerous? Without hesitation, he said, absolutely not. So let's just get that right back yeah. on the record. Yeah. Well, I mean, so, I think everybody so knows if, that. if anyone in Nashville or or the state of Tennessee is tuning in, absolutely not. Well, it, cannabis is not physically addictive, but you can acquire a dependency on cannabis. 
And when you uh, stop, the withdrawals will be irritability. Not mm-hmm. There won't be any, like, you won't have any physical pain. You won't get s- physically sick. But you'll get bummed out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I get that when I don't have my coffee. Yeah, anymore. exactly. Exactly. Well, caffeine is a lot more addictive than, than cannabis. Caffeine is actually <laughs> physically addictive. And right, caffeine and- is about, uh, what is that? A few hundred people a year die from caffeine poisoning. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And do they, did they test all these caffeine drinks uh, uh, and, and give the government seal of approval before they uh, put them on the market? Like they're talking about with CBD now? Right. So uh, that's a really great point, Phil. Now, did they study caffeine or ginseng, for that matter, or St. John's Ward or valerian root or camel? Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Well, none of, right. none of those are Schedule 1. Here's a study out from a company called Headset in Seattle, a cannabis data analytic firm. And what they found out is that seniors are spending more on cannabis than millennials and wow. uh <laughs> that's surprising right and they're, they're spending it's not, more. and it's not that they're being charged more it's that they're buying higher quality products like in wine a, bo- a boomer is going to buy uh, a nice bottle of cabernet whereas the uh the millennials is going to be they'll just order the table wine you know? mm-hmm. gotcha. uh, and also it turns out that uh, these boomers are using a lot more of the topicals and the and edibles than, mm-hmm. than right. and they're more inclined to spend a little extra to buy that so, you know dark chocolate infused yeah, yeah. cocoa bit, cocoa nub or something you know. But I wonder uh, if that takes into account black market weed though, because I'll bet you the millennials buy a lot more of that. Do you think? I would think. Well, right now the the number one thing the black market has going for them is that they're going to be cheaper. Oh. You know, which is another thing. If the police want to eliminate the black market, why don't you stop, you know, putting 30, 40% tax on the legal pot? And then, you know, <laughs> exactly. uh, yeah. then you'll definitely, you know, diminish the, the black market, along with testing the black market stuff and publishing it. I think that's sure. That has to be done. Right. Yeah. I uh, like that idea. Well, I, I, and I think another aspect of it is, is that the, uh, the boomers have money. Right. And millennials, you know, Still working a lot on of acquiring them it, don't. Yeah. Yeah, they don't. Know. Well, they're still working on acquiring it. They're still working off. Their college loans. Right. I mean, you know, they're the millennials more than anybody else are are like burdened with these huge college debt, you know, yeah. educational loans, and 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 you know that probably isn't going to stop them from smoking weed, but it may prevent them from getting the premium quality mm-hmm. um, and and the other ancillary products that their sure. uh, that their parents and grandparents can afford. <laughs> but but there is a problem. What's happening is these these. Uh, Baby boomers, these aging people, are they're going out and they're buying all this. They're like kids in candy shops, some of them. They're going there, buying all this product, you know. And, <laughs> and then when they really sit down and they talk to a medical professional, they're realizing you really don't need all all this stuff, you know. <laughs> yeah. You don't need no. to spend a couple hundred dollars a month on it. What, and what they're saying is that you could get an eighth of an ounce. And and actually smoking it really is sort of a good way to... to uh, ingest your medicine for a lot of mm-hmm. conditions. And what they're telling them is now THC definitely they find it definitely helps with chronic pain, but it doesn't take much. So they're telling people really just learn to microdose hmm. a little bit here and there and you can really get all the benefits without spending a lot of money. Hmm. Yep. So what this is also telling us is that uh, a lot of these millennials are using it for medicinal purposes, but I think a lot of them are just it's having recreational, fun. Yeah. It's recreational, yeah. It's recreational. It's just social, yeah. Right. It's a social recreational thing. Now, I've seen a lot of police officers say when they argue against legalization is that cannabis has absolutely no medical value. It's all about people just wanting to get high. Mm-hmm. Now, um, what my argument, what I've always said is no, it's all about the, the, the medical patient. You know, that does have medicinal value. And more I've thought about it, I think we're both right. I think yeah. they do have a good point. Yes, a, a lot of this is about people just wanting to get high, and but there is a legitimate medical use. So realistically, well, but what's wrong with just wanting to get a little high once in a while? I mean, right. So what if they just want to get high? It's their right. Yeah. Well, well, you know? the police are against recreational drugs. Well, some recreational well, drugs. Alcohol is fine. Yeah, I was going to say caffeine <laughs> are fine, but cannabis and uh, and oxycontin is fine. Opiates are fine if you have the right note. 
you have a doctor's nerve. Well, I mean, the the idea that it has no practical medicinal value is just patently, objectively false. There are there are people who have made their entire livings and built their entire careers studying this, who have much more qualifications than a cop to determine whether it is or is not medicinally valuable, and they say absolutely it is. Mm-hmm. Well, police officers aren't medical professionals. Well, I mean, they're not experts. Yeah, they don't have... Yeah, exactly. They're not qualified to make that judgment. Really? And the medical professionals who are say that it is. We have a little more business news to talk about. Jay, what do you got? Well, I got a story about a company called Next Leaf. This is from marketexclusive.com. Next Leaf becomes the first public firm to get a patent for cannabinoid extraction. Next Leaf Solutions Limited said it received a patent from the United States Patent Office for its process of extraction, refinement, and distillation of cannabinoids from marijuana and hemp. The company believes that it is the first publicly traded company to be issued a patent for the extraction and purification of cannabinoids. What I think is interesting cool. here is uh, it is the process itself produces THC and, and CBD uh, distillates. Uh, which are tasteless, odorless, and standardized for potency. So this could be really okay. huge, you know. So they're ready. Th- th- this product, once it's distilled, is ready for, you know, a wide range of, of products from, you know, anything. Topicals and transdermal, sublinguals, right. uh, vape, vaping, edibles, everything, beverages. So in other words, it's going to produce an, a, a, a final product, an oil, if you will, that can be used for just about anything that's on the market right now with exact dosing with no flavor. So that's really going to be interesting. So That's pretty big. That's pretty so, big. Now, are there there are a lot of different methods for extraction and some of them are better than others. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, some of them use chemicals. Andrew's talked about it, you know, and well, use, yeah, use, for extracting oils uh, traditionally uh people like Rick Simpson uses alcohol uh, the butane mm-hmm. extraction it was very popular. Now, when testing some of the uh, the and critiquing some of the oils, the butane really scores pretty high. But the new thing is the CO two supercritical uh, extraction. Yeah, and these are these very expensive machines, right. and uh, they use C- uh, laboratory grade or or food grade CO two, and it's recycled, so there's nothing toxic. You know. Uh, but now they're using now they have some systems like that that use alcohol that to extract it. So you're back to using uh, dangerous, chem, you, know, you know, flammable chemicals. One of the advantages that Next Leaf is pushing is that their process turns really low quality biomass, which is basically uh, you know the leftovers after initial processing, into a really high quality uh, purified distilled oil. So in other words. The sticks and stems and leaves and all the leftover crap um, can be dumped into this process and turned into a super high, highly refined oil that can be used. Can you tell in, me more about the process? It doesn't get into it deeply. I think some of that's still sort of quiet. Probably um, proprietary. Yeah, yeah, it's proprietary, and they're not sharing a lot of that, uh, is my impression by the articles that I've read. So is, a, is it water-soluble? It is water-soluble. Yep. It's a water-soluble... It, um, highly refined and it's and it's dosed exactly. Yeah, you know, but but oil is too. Once you have the amount and the, and the potency, I mean, so that that's not really such a great brag. I mean, that's- well, no, the brag is that they got a patent, <laughs> so they own this process and they claim it's it's inexpensive. How they do it is not not spelled out in the articles. A couple articles I saw. So this is a company you would want to invest in. Yeah, that's the whole idea. I, I think. Yeah, and. and uh, they're on the, the Canadian Stock Exchange, and their call letters are OILS, O-I-L-S. What, recently, a company called Curio Wellness uh, filed a lawsuit against the Maryland Medical Marijuana Commission, who are going to start issuing additional grow permits to help diversify the industry. Um, now, Curio sued them to stop... Th- to stop them from offering more uh, grow permits because they obviously didn't want the competition. Well, the public okay. got wind of this, and social network went crazy 
all these Maryland patients said, oh, yeah, screw you. We're boycotting your product. And we, <laughs> we planned a, a demonstration in front of your facility. I mean, they came down <laughs> hard. Power to the people. So Curio came back and said, whoa, whoa, okay, we'll drop it. We'll drop the lawsuit. We'll drop the lawsuit. Now, what this is, I believe, is an example of, of two things. One, there's people getting into the industry that really don't know that much about cannabis. And there's a lot of people, there's a lot of patients out there that have been organized and working together and have had a common cause for a long time. So when you start uh, doing things that they don't like, they, they man, they're organized. And now with, through social networking, man, they're all over it. So, yeah, yeah. You, and that's a good I think thing. when you're going in business here, I mean, it's one thing to know about business and how to get the permits and, and set it, set the built, you know, your, you know, hire the contractors, set the business up. Mm-hmm. And there's another thing relating to the customers, man. If you don't know a lot yeah. about cannabis and you're getting in this industry, you need to get some people in there that can relate to the customers. Cause, right. cause you, you better know your market right, because they will turn on you like, uh, in a heartbeat. I'm not saying anything really bad about Curio. I mean, in business, that's the way business is done nowadays, man. you got to right. be aggressive. And they're just being good businessmen from their perspective. But I don't think they really – they obviously didn't understand their customer. Now, And, and, and there goes their image. Right, and know? more power to them for, for going, okay, okay, we'll drop it. Okay. I mean, you're, we're, we're sorry. That's true. We didn't realize that that was a mistake. You know, that's true. And you got to give him credit for that. All oh, right, yeah. so lessons learned. Move on. But, but I think it's a great – I think like you say, Andrew, it's a great – statement about the uh the power of the market you know people have choices and you know if you you know don't give them what they want on one end well they're going to find it somewhere else and you could be left out in the cold uh, with a big black eye so i i think it's a, a great testament to that power and I'm, I'm glad to hear it and i'm glad that like you say curio um you made know, the right choice ma- well, it's like they always say, if you can't make them see the light, make them feel the heat. We're really glad that you took some time out of your day once again to join us here at Vote Pro Podcast. Um, we hope you'll spread the word about it. If you know anybody who is interested in all things cannabis, or anything's cannabis for that matter, please pass along our information. You can find us at votepropot.com. You can send us an email at votepropot at gmail.com. And please like and follow us and leave a comment on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Just do a search for Vote Pro Pot. Wish I was up in Good old Santa Miguel at the beginning of the day. But here I am in New York City, hiding out the Central Park, getting kidnapped by the ponies today, sometime before dark. But I wish I was a Ben Van at the Cannabis Cafe. Smoking good old sense me good At the beginning of the day The judge looked down upon me friend He said, kid, get on your way Just don't start out your morning With espresso and a J I said, I wish I was a big man Smoking good old sense media at the beginning of the day. Hitched on now to port. Took the bus over to the neighborhood To have a bowl with my coffee Now I'm up in Vancouver At the Cannabis Cafe 
smoking good old sense media at the beginning of the day. Smoking good old sense media at the beginning of the day.